So, you know, often what happens is the Indian industrialist is very dharmic, he's a Hindu, he's, a, he's traditional, uh, and, and he knows that he made his money through capitalism. He doesn't believe in Marxism because that would dismantle capitalism. But the next generation, they go off to places like Harvard and Yale and Brown and Princeton, and they come up with these sort of wokeist ideas which are very fashionable. So often I come across a generational divide between the parent generation that are very patriotic and loyal to their culture and the next generation from the same family that are turning woke. Woke has become quite fashionable even among Indian people, particularly those who think they are liberal and who've got an education in places like Harvard. So one of the ironies and one of the big surprises that is revealed in this book is that Harvard is the hub of this kind of uh, anti-India wokeism with Indian billionaires funding it. There is a center called Mahindra Humanities Center at Harvard. Each, I give a full chapter on that. There is a Piramal Center at Harvard, a full chapter on that. And there is a Lakshmi Mittal and, Cent and Family uh, South Asia Institute, and I give a full chapter on that. So each of these and many others, there's Godrej involved, there is uh, P Premji involved, there's Tata Institute of Social Sciences involved. So, and, and in India, there's a mirror effect in Ashoka University, Kriya University, they're all bringing this very extreme leftism and wokeism into the Indian curriculum and influencing Indian But that must be a very youth. insignificant, so new but is that, really a, a is, new that, is that really a significant impact? I mean, three or four departments in three or four American universities, what difference would it make? So this is entering the liberal arts policies in India because they have not brought in Vedic liberal arts, they brought in westernized liberal arts. And wherever there's liberal arts, now the NEP wants to spread liberal arts into IITs and IIMs. So obviously it is important. Then in the uh, Niti Aayog policies, Niti Aayog policies, they have some of these same Harvard guys as consultants. That has high leverage. And then you know, when you see Indian billionaires funding, their family name, more important than their money even, is being used as credibility for this whole movement. The movement can say this is coming from the Mittal Center. Or, or, or this is coming from the Mahindra Center, and people who are working there get legitimacy. What What so do you mean by woke funding woke on thinking? India, on what South do they Asia. What What do they fund? What, what, when you When you You've almost made it look as so if what they're funding is yeah. So the, the the woke funding consists of funding issues of gender, issues of caste, issues of LGBTQ, issues of minority, rather than. The India story, the India story that you talk about, that I talk about, is not the story being taught. What is being taught in, the, in South Asia studies is things like oppression, things like uh, did the Dalits and the minorities get equal treatment during COVID? These kind of issues. But won't that, won't that so, change you know, automatically? You I, you isn't it, isn't it a, there are problems in it. Isn't it a leftover of the pre liberalization era? Many of the people teaching in these institutions, quote unquote, so South Asian studies, would have probably migrated to the US in the 80s and the 90s and stayed there. And therefore, they are, it's their own little tiny bit of insular academic indulgence. Why not let them? I mean, what harm can they be? At the most, they are they're irrelevant. Are we they're giving not, them more not, importance than necessary? No, no. no, no, no. Uh, Ajanta Subramaniam, who wrote this book, Attacking IITs, is a young person. Suraj Yengde at the Harvard Kennedy School, who has, who has uh, really championed this Afro-Dalit, that the Dalits are the Africans, Af Dalits and Africans are the same people according to him. He's a very young man, he must be in his 30s, and he's a poster boy of this movement. So actually, this movement is being dominated by the young people, it's not the old left. The old left, as you said, is, has passed out, it's gone, it's like very uh, marginal, but this is the new left.